Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to see a very important SQL question from interview perspective, which is how to fine tune your SQL queries or a way to increase performance of your application. So let's get started with some ways to tune your SQL queries. Now you must be using these queries in your day to day life, but you might not have been knowing that these queries are actually reducing your performance to a very great extent. Now, in this video, we are not going to just discuss the uh, issues that using this query, this performance issue is coming. Rather than that, we will actually discuss the solutions to those also so that you could implement it in your project to increase your performance. So let's get started with the very first and very common issue that we always do. So I'm going to take an example of employee and projects table here. So if I say I need some business logic that given an employee, I want to fetch all the employee IDs and their address where they are currently located. So what is the basic thing which we will which we'll do for sure? So we'll just see what all things are present in it. So select star from employee. This is my table. So I can see I have ID name, the project allocated to the employee, the state, city and pin where does it live. And what we do, we will fetch the ID name and its city where it lives and return it back to the POJO. In Hibernate or in a simple CRUD, what we do, we always do this, right? We just fetch the details from the table and set it in a POJO. But with this star, can you see we have so many unwanted things. I just wanted to know in which city my employees are actually working. So these were Bhopal, Delhi, Pune, the code decode, code decode 2, 3, these are working here. So I could have also done this with just select ID, name, city. And with this also, I get my result. The initial result was just a redundant columns that we are fetching from the table, which is not having any kind of use. So using this will take a toll on the resources of database while querying lot of unnecessary columns and data from the table. So the very first thing that is recommended is please avoid using select star and rather than that use the required fields like we have used id name and city the only required fields that you want to set in your pojo only those should be selected in this table so this is the very first thing secondly i can see so much of redundant data i need unique result of the name so you will do distinct so when you do select distinct name you got only one two three four five six and seven seven records these are only unique records so what's the problem why i should not use distinct so you should understand this that actually what distinct uses is grouping so group by is what it use for every single row it will use group by so our code will be first grouped by and then all decode will be grouped by so this takes a toll because every time when you try to group a large processing power is required so you should not use distinct now you'll ask me okay great if i don't use distinct how will i be able to find out distinct if, even if i remove this what will happen it will not return you distinct right you will say okay no no see i have code and bhopal again it's it's nine rows now it's no more distinct let me use distinct no rather than that you should be able to find all the columns when selected will give you unique result. So if I select a project here also, so I know that in one of the project, only one person named code decode in one city exists. I know the sequence. So this is again, when you know the data, when you know the table, when you know the business, then only you will be able to figure out these complications. Then only you will be able to remove distinct. So it's better to go to DBA or the database administrator or architect of your database and understand like how can I remove this distinct and involve n number of uh, columns which will give you distinct result. So if I run this, I'll get this record code Bhopal 1, code Bhopal 2. So these are distinct records. So if you know the combination on how to make each and every record distinct so that you don't have to use distinct to reduce the grouping and to increase the performance, you can always use the combinations of those columns to make your code efficient. Third and very important thing, create joins with inner join and not where. Why not where? Why inner join? So if I give you an example of employee table and project table and I'll say that please select all the employees and not just with project. I also need the project name. 
so my project table has project and project name so i just not need project id i also need some description about their project names so what should i do select star from employee e project table e where e dot project equals to e dot if i run this see what i got give you what all columns and what all data we had in employee table we had nine rows in employee table and two rows in project table and only the id 1 and id 8 used to match with project 1 and project 2 that is why in our output we just got id 1 and 8 which is matching with project ids and hence this particular query returns you only those employees with the with who are having project and just not their project ids you get you also get their project name so when you create a join like these to get data not from just one table but also from multiple tables you use join but what thing you should remember is never use where why because where always creates a cartesian product if you if you remember what is cartesian product so here i had nine rows code decode code two code three and so on code till nine rows and we had project one and project two two rows now with the where clause cartesian product happens that means the one row from employee will be mapped with first row of this then the first row will be again mapped to second row then second row will be mapped to first and second both third will be mapped to first and second both and so on till nine rows so all the nine rows will be multiplied with all the two rows of project table so if it has n and it is n so the m cross n will be your row set and here we had nine rows in employee table nine rows in employee table two rows in project table so we had nine cross two that is 18 row set and first these 18 row sets are created and then where clauses use to segregate only those rows where the project matches so here only two rows are having project matching with the project table. So just two rows are the required rows but we fetched all 18 rows. So if you can see this is 9x time our SQL had to work. Our database is worked upon 9x time to get the proper data. And hence this is resource intensive and the database resources are wasted 9x times. And your performance is reduced by nine times. To increase the performance, a simple thing that you have to do here is remove the where clause. And if I remove the where clause, what is the solution? Use inner join. So select star from this inner join project on e dot project equals to p dot project. And see, my result is the same. And now no Cartesian project happens. Only those matching rows having code ID1 and 8 is mapped with P1 and P2. So only two rows are fetched. So your performance is increased 9x times. Just by using inner join and not a where clause to join two tables, you have increased your performance 9x time. And this is only when your data is just 9 records. If you had thousands of records here and thousands of records here, your performance would have been decreased by 1000 times. Fourth point, use where instead of having to define filters. If I ask you to find people whose name is code and calculate all those number of employees so given an employee you will you what you will have to do you will have to calculate all the rows whose name is code and give their count to me so the result should be code three because code is repeated three times name comma count of name i need to aggregate my data because i just don't need the code i also need number of times it is repeated so count of it from employee i have to group by so i'll do group by name so if i do this how many records should be returned i should have seven records one with code with three records and rest of them are unique so total of seven records should be there so yes i got seven records now i want that Please fetch only those employees with their count whose name is code. So what the th the next thing that comes to my mind is having name equals to code and this will work. Yes, it does work. So I am selecting name and the 
count of all the employees whose name is code with a group by so this is so simple so problem is you should not do that in the pre third point i've said that please use in not join where is a very bad evil you should not use where in the fourth point i'm saying please use where but you should know where to use the where clause and where not to when you are joining two tables you should never use a where clause it will cause the cartesian product which is a very bad thing in the terms of performance but you should always use where clause where wherever you can to avoid having clause why why is it like i should use where clause and not having i am actually getting my data with having name equals to code why i should do this from employee where name equals to code why do i need to do this see if even if i run this my output is same so why i should use where and why i should not use having the reason is actually in the order in which this particular sql query is executed so when you run or execute this query what runs the very first thing is from employee okay so suppose this is my query what is the order in which this particular query is executed so always this is the first thing which is executed it fetches which table it has to work upon so these are multiple tables so the first thing which is fetched upon is which table it has to work upon then the where clause is fetched this is the second thing it uses to bifurcate your rows so if you have nine rows the first thing that will work upon all these nine rows is a where clause and filter out only those rows which are matching your number of code so in nine rows only three rows matched so with the where clause here itself only three rows are matched and these are returned and then they are done using group by name so these are all grouped by name and the count is returned this is how where works but when you use having name and you don't use this what happens first employee is selected all the nine rows are there then the where clause is not there suppose then group by is the the, the next thing which is calculated so it group by so all the nine rows are actually grouped by in seven rows how so these were the seven rows this is how group by works so first from then if where clause is there then it is calculated else group by name is calculated so now seven rows will be calculated from these seven rows only the rows which is having the name is code is returned and then count is calculated over it so can you see with having there are three steps what are these steps first is group by on seven rows second is having on one row and third is count that is again one now when it comes to where at the initial step itself only those rows are calculated whose name is code so at the first step itself you have three rows and then group by doesn't even matter much because you are already grouped by with the names and then the count is returned the number of rows that is returned is reduced and hence the performance is increased so always use where and not having so this is where you should know where to use your where clause and where not now the fifth point is avoid too much of joins and queries use only when it is necessary so now suppose you will be asking me that we were using joins here happily why do you want to reduce these joins if i'm happily getting my data if i remove this on point the number of results at which is actually returned to you is increased so let me remove this once now this is the n number of data you get why because this inner join is converted into cartesian product on removing the condition so if you are using join you should remember that the return of your join should be less number of rows if the row count in your result set increases like this much then your performance decreases to a very good extent so even if you i i won't say don't don't use join because to get the data from two different table you have to use join but what at least you can do is you can reduce the number of result set to only the required number of result set so just two so this is much more efficient query with the less number of rows in your result set compared to the previous one because the query is likely to be very slow when 
the row count in the result set is increased so most of your api apis what it does is it fetches the data discards most of the data and returns you the most of them now so you can always use limit to reduce your result set so suppose you are doing some kind of pagination you need only 10 rows at a time to be shown on your front end do not get all the data then use a for loop and then fetch only 10 data and return it to front end don't do that you can you can always use the limit of 10 and then return it and then next time set it as offset and limit so that the next time next time you get so this is how you do pagination also now avoid cursors at all cost so we have many more things to cover like we might have been using these kinds of operators like not equal to or like so are there any kind of solutions to it we are we might not be using limit that we have already covered we might be using wildcards but not using it the start end we might have been using it the start and we have many more such things to cover but i don't have bandwidth to cover it in this video if you want to cover more such things and the solutions and the problems you must let me know in the comment section i'll create a second part of it thank you